All right, Dave, sticking with our theme here, top foods we want to avoid, histamines. And this one can be really tricky because fermented foods, people that have been tuning into the show for a long period of time know that they come up, you know, regularly and touted as being very healthy. Plus, even if we're eating quality foods, like you're talking about there, our grass-fed beef and, and quality meats, if we're leaving it in the fridge overnight and having that as leftovers the next day, that can be a problem there as well. So let's talk about histamines and why this is something that we need to be aware of and make better decisions if it's affecting us in a negative way. I'm so happy that you brought this up, Jesse. A lot of people who want to chat about food kind of miss this part. Now, everyone's heard of histamines, right? Because, well, antihistamines are what you take if you have an allergy, like Benadryl. Well, histamines are more complex than that because they're formed by bacteria fermenting proteins in food. So very high histamine foods include soy sauce, which is fermented high-protein soy. And tofu can be high in histamine. Fish sauce is the highest histamine food we eat. And if you have great onboard abilities to break down histamine and you don't have any allergies going on, you can eat a bunch of soy sauce and there's no problem here. But a lot of people eat foods like leftovers, especially protein-based leftovers, and then after they have the food, they get food cravings or they get really tired. You might have heard of people talk about a pork coma. <laughs> like, oh, I ate the pork and I was so tired. What's going on there is that pork is also a higher histamine food because of its amino acid ratios when it just sits in the fridge. It's not spoiled. It's just starting like on the very beginnings of that. Histamine is recognized as a food toxin by the FDA and a very high histamine food can actually kill you. Um, since I am histamine sensitive, uh, I notice that if I eat even fresh grass fed beef, like ground beef, that's been sitting in the fridge for three or four days before I cook it, I'll eat it and I'll start getting a cough or I'll get heartburn from it that I don't get if I cook it when it's fresh. The reason I'm histamine sensitive is that I lived in a house with toxic mold for a long time. And a lot of people who got COVID, whether or not they also uh, were forced to inject anything or not. Um, they're also getting higher histamine sensitivity than ever before. So what that means is that, that's weird. I know I can eat hamburger, but then sometimes you feel bad when you eat it, sometimes you don't. It has to do with the freshness of the food. And fermented foods, they're not good or bad for you. Generally speaking, if it fermented with bacteria that don't make histamine, it was probably good for you. If they were fermented with bacteria that make histamine and you have a problem with it, that one brand of kombucha may knock you on your butt. Or maybe that sauerkraut, that batch, it's just not okay. And every time you eat it, you get tired and you want sugar. It's histamine that's causing that. Uh, so I talk about this in the book. It's, like, it's a fact of life. There's always going to be some histamine out there. Your body has an onboard ability to do it. But if you're like a lot of us who went through the last couple of years, your ability to handle higher histamine levels in food goes down. So you feel like crap and you're hungry all the time. It's because that fermented food wasn't fermented the way that works for you. So I'm a huge fan of fermented food only if you feel good when you eat it. And if you're somebody that is having fermented food, say you're eating at a friend's house and you're not sure of the source or you're not sure if they're serving meat that's been sitting in the fridge for a couple of days, you mentioned that example and how would it would affect you. There is an enzyme, I believe, called DAO, a supplement that you can take with those foods if you're possibly going to be sensitive. Can you talk about that? And if that's something you're using? I love it that you know about this and you're sharing this information, Jesse. It, it's awesome. The enzyme your body is supposed to make in your liver is called DAO or diamine oxidase. And that's what breaks up histamine. Get it? Histamine, diamine oxidase. So this is what breaks it down. And some of us make more of it than others. And some of us are just more sensitive uh, with our histamine receptors. So yes, if I'm at a party or I'm eating food where I just don't know how fresh it is, or if I know I'm eating leftovers, I will take DAO, but I do something a little extra. I usually have a Benadryl on me. Benadryl will make you really sleepy if you take a whole one. But if you eat some food and you're like, oh, I got weird heartburn from that, that heartburn actually isn't from stomach acid. That heartburn right after you eat it, that's from histamine hitting your esophagus. 
So what you do then is you take a quarter, just a tiny, you break off a little tiny bit of, of a Benadryl and you kind of chew it up. It tastes all a little spicy and then you swallow it and magically you don't get the symptoms from the food. You take all the Benadryl, you'll go take a nap. So you can actually do that if you're having problems with some foods. The first thing you do is start coughing, your eyes will water, your nose will water, or you'll sneeze after you eat it. That's a sign you got histamine in the food and you were sensitive to it. And then you can hit it right then and you'll be perfectly fine. If you wait a while, you're just gonna feel like a zombie. You're gonna want dessert, you're gonna want espresso, and you're gonna try and prop yourself up as the histamine is pushing things down. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Chicken's just bad from an ethical perspective, from the way it's raised, and from a health perspective. If you do these things, you will live longer and feel better and have less emotional reactivity because you're less stressed physiologically. And you need this.